all right ladies and gentlemen this one right here long awaited i think this is my first making of video from john bellion that i'm reacting to i've seen other making of videos but i just i put watch them on my own leisure this is the first one that we are watching together roll it if you've been around the channel long enough you obviously know that i've grown to have a fascination and a fandom and just like respect for john belly and as an artist whether it be behind the keys and behind the production of major artists like justin bieber and just you know etc any name any a-list artist there's probably a john belly and influence somewhere in there so obviously mad respect for that but also mad respect for his his individual personal music, which is obviously not going to get as much shine because he's not the A-list celebrity because he doesn't want to be that A-list celebrity. But what not being an A-list celebrity allows him to do is be a lot more experimental with his sound and his sound. It's it's their hits, their hits, but they're not going to be radio play hits because it doesn't have that radio quote unquote for not formulaic sound, but definitely it's it's a safe sound whenever you're producing a hit for a major artist. So I appreciate these John cuts because it allows me to see into him as an individual person and artist. And it's just dope seeing like going on the ride, going on the ride of wherever John's creativity and mind wants to take us. We're going. We're probably not going to be pausing a whole lot unless something strikes me and I wanted to like say a comment real quick about it. But this video will be on Patreon for Patreon to view probably six to seven weeks before it even hits YouTube, if not longer. So if y'all guys want to get in on that, consider joining on Patreon. You do get you do get benefit for the money and the tier that you subscribe at. If y'all guys want to support me as a creator outside of YouTube, outside of Patreon, um, I strongly consider joining us over on Twitch. Twitch is amazing. Most people that go to all people, not even most people, anybody that's gone to, gone to Twitch has said that they love Twitch more so than they like YouTube because it's very intimate. You get to be a part of the content. You are there with me recording these videos live. Most of the reactions on this channel come from live stream um, where I record them for YouTube just in front of a live audience. If you've never been on a live stream, I strongly consider joining mine because if you like the vibe of the channel, it's the same exact vibe live. But other than that, we got John Bellion. We got Making of Guillotine. Let's get it. All right, I know I said we weren't going to pause it a lot, but I say it in every John video. I like the fact that when he's making his music, specifically this song, you can hear the you can hear the foundations of where the instrumentation started. And generally, a lot of John's songs start with a beatbox, like a very simple beatbox, I feel like. And it's funny that I've said that before in prior videos. And here he is beatboxing to the making of the song that I said, oh, he beatboxes. You can hear it in the song, you know? I love seeing the behind the scenes shit. But I want to use kind of like disco y, really rich, like 70s slivey drum. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hard, bro. I want to be in between the pockets to get it really moving before he lays the bass in. Right. Could you imagine just laying that down like that? It's very simple. And I feel like I, I have to explain this to people a lot. I feel, especially with like fine art, not necessarily music, but fine art. When people are like, oh, that's simple. I could have done that, but you didn't, you know, you only say that you could have done it because you know what it sounds like already. You didn't have the idea for that drum pattern in your mind. You just, you hear it now and you're like, oh, I could lay that down too. It's like being the person who plays piano for Beethoven, you know, they like classical pianists and actually being Beethoven and writing that piece. There's a huge difference. <laughs> I've always wanted to try to use one of those I'm always fascinated at what people, what adjectives, but what I was gonna say is like, I find it, I find it like interesting, the adjectives that people use, musicians use for like their music. Swimming in the bass? Who the fuck says that? And you. Okay. <laughs> I need, I need a jamming bass line and I need you here soon. I'm at a point in my career where I need, I need collaboration to like keep me moving. When it comes to this, what he's saying right here, same thing I felt, or a lot of people felt about J. Cole. Like, it's cool. You made a lot of albums solo dolo, and it's cool. But even J. Cole's like, I don't want to be that guy that never collaborated with anybody, that never trusted his music to the to the process of someone else. Like, it's dope to be able to go triple plat, no features, 
But now we need to now we need to be family and collaborate for the sake of the music. Yeah. Those two daps were some of the cleanest. I've three daps were some of the cleanest. Nah, that one wasn't as clean. The first three daps though. I don't know shit about any of this, bro. Imagine having all this knowledge of all this technology. Every butt, every fucking button and every knob on all of these boards does something. And I'm supposed to know all that? Bro, he gets so fucking hyped, bro. It's so dope watching like someone get hyped about something that they're making and they're making it from scratch. There's no, I mean, sampling is an art form in its own in hip hop, but making something from nothing, crazy process. <laughs> When I was writing it yesterday, I'm getting to a punchline, and if the punchline can get to it before the hook actually drops, let the hook be some scatting. Let the hook just vibe off of what you're doing. <laughs> Bro, just fucking around, or not really fucking around, but definitely like experimenting and just saying shit to land somewhere. I, I just watched episode number two of the Kanye documentary trilogy, and one of the parts in the trilogy on Netflix, if you haven't seen it, if you're not a fan of Kanye, you don't gotta be, but just to see the determination of somebody is crazy at the level of Kanye. But when Jamie Foxx, he was in studio when he, they were laying down the slow jam session, what you hear in the fucking beginning was like, oh, 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 she says she wants, like that fucking little riff, that intro, that was just them experimenting, saying shit off the top. That's crazy to me, bro, that that's how most major ideas come. It's not a fully fleshed out idea. They say something and then they're like, oh, that might have been something, and then they go off of that. Problematic man. <laughs> How much is this motherfucker sound, getting paid off this off this song? Uh, you know? That envelope, that same release, that same feel, which is okay. low and high octaves, make right. it full and scarcely, sparsely. Put it on the one, and then the rest just juxtaposing the bass line. But, but, we'll listen to it. Yeah, and, and fall in between and pick and choose your spots, though. Just falling. Just creating his own little pocket for the keys. Thinking melody. Creating melody is mad difficult. I can't. I can't even think in the form of a melody. Just to come up with the that melody is in the song. It's not like that wasn't the fucking. Oh, okay, we're just fucking around. Nah, that was the melody, and it's in the song. Because that that first melody, that first melody is crazy against the. Sleep on me. Feel the something in my heart just break. Sleep on me. Feel the rhythm in my chest just breathe. Ooh. That's, that's, that's gotta be better. I will stay. So the something something rhymes with stay. <laughs> then go into that pre. That's crazy, bro. I'll take to my something. There's bones in my something. There's bones in my claw. There's bones in my claw. Bones in my grave. Bones in my bones. Let them don't let they There's bones in my closet 
Dun, 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 da, da, dun. Yeah, that's such a nice melody. Ooh, shit. I'm getting hype right now. There's bones in my closet, but you ain't love anyway. But you, there's bones in my closet, but you hang stuff anyway. <laughs> oh, bro. Freestyle? There's bones in my closet, but you hang stuff anyway. Playing for Billy Joel and killing, <laughs> killing shows and doing things. But I can get Anything is possible. <laughs> Anything is possible. Sonic production grandeur. You know, all that stuff is great, but when you get to the meat and potatoes of the song, it still sounds great. It's just crazy to think, like, if you would have told me two years ago, I'd be like, I need three string players. We, we, I want to play with them to make sure that these lyrics are good. Like, to have that at my disposal is, like, it's just such a blessing. Sheet music, bro. Another language in the song. These motherfuckers are just going to come in, know nothing about the song. Never heard it, never played the, the arrangement. And they're just going to get it perfect on the first time. Just want to make sure that we really create that tension with the dynamics and like... Tension, dynamics. You hear what I'm saying? All these words that musicians use. Shit got me crying in the club right now, bro. Off the rip? other mics not pick up this that's what i want to know i've never understood that about sound engineering or like you know how do the other mics i get the sure mic because the one that he's using is this mic right here because if you're far away from the mic like the further you get away from the mic and then if you get like behind the mic like this is such a directional mic that you have to be like right here you have to be like right on the mic in order for it to sound as clear as it does so it's a good mic for him to sing into Cause it's not going to pick up the guitar so much. It's not going to pick up the string so much, but these other mics, I don't know. How do they do it? Sleep on me and feel the rhythm in my chest. Just breathe and I will stay. So the lantern in your heart won't fade. Mm. The secrets you tell me, I'll take to my grave. There's bones in my closet, but you hang stuff anyway. The secrets you tell me I'll take to my grave. There's bones in my closet, but you hang stuff anyway, bro. Holy fuck. I've heard the song plenty of times, but that bar is insane, bro. Those two bars? Those two bars are crazy, bro. Holy shit. The secrets you tell me I'll take to my grave. There's bones in my closet, but you hang stuff anyway. And if you have nightmares, we'll dance on And then when the girl. bass comes in, I know that you'll love me, love me, even when I lose my head. Pizza. Oh my god, this is. Bum, ba, dum, bum, bum. I hate the fact, I love these making of guillotine, but I hate the fact that I know what it sounds like as acoustic. You know, because the song is so nice. The actual re studio recording version of the song is so nice. But when he when we hear these ac acoustic sets, this one, Conversations with My Wife, crazy, bro. It's like a whole nother level. Even when I lose my head Oh, 
like just the raw, like untreated tone from the cello sounds so incredible. It's Thank you. Good one out of makeup. We're gonna send it to you guys when we have a rough mix. We're gonna dive into the mix. Great. Just really a, like an organic, soulful tip to just drive the funk home. <laughs> drive the point home of what's going on. <laughs> Another solid dap, these motherfuckers. These motherfuckers are just dapping it up, like practicing. How are they getting it like this? <laughs> Almost like dark, sweet love song. Okay. Guillotine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The secrets you tell me I'll take to my grave. There's bones in my closet, but you hang stuff anyway. If you have nightmares, we'll dance on the bed. You know that you love me even when I lose my head. Guillotine. Okay. Sweet. Okay. Tim, Tim Burton esque. Like bro, the lyrics are so fucking fire, bro. The lyrics are so fucking fire. All the, the double entendre the whole time. I've heard the song again. I know the double entendre is there, but hearing it again. Yeah, that's just hard, bro. Infectiously hard. Is that kid? No, not time machine. That's kid robot for sure. Think about how long this is taking for a three and a half minute song. Maybe four minutes. I don't remember how long. It could be five minutes. Think about how long this process is taking in order for these five minutes to sound the way that they do. Whoever edited this part of the video, crazy. Crazy, bro. Look, here's the actual video reaction. Ah. <laughs> bro, the camera, the camera angles changed so much. Why is my face so big right there? Why do I have a mustache? What's happening here? I'm outside of myself. Guillotine. guillotine. Like literally lose your head. Why did I say guillotine? Why did I pronounce the fucking L's? Who knows? Yo! Crazy request, yo. I knew this video was gonna be mad long. I expected it to be. I'll probably cut it down, cut out the parts that I don't think are as interesting, or maybe there's a moment in there so the video could speed along. This video will probably be long anyway, but either way, it's crazy seeing somebody's creative talent at the level of John, and then also seeing the making of the songs that come from that talent. You know what I'm saying? I figured I was gonna enjoy it. Why would I not? Seeing the behind the scenes of things is so fire.